All right. Well, good afternoon. Um, welcome to our Mercer Wealth Practice Early Career Panel. We're super excited to have you join us today, and we thank you for giving of your time um, and, and coming to today's presentation. Um, my name is Michaela Seward. I am one of the campus recruiters here at Mercer. Um, I've been with the organization for almost seven years and I support recruiting in our central market, which is essentially the Midwest. Um, I'm joined today by my colleagues, William Randall. He supports the East Market. Um, and so that pretty much covers the entire Eastern Seaboard and um, as well as Louisville and Tennessee, or I should say Kentucky, Tennessee, um, North Carolina. And, um, and then Shannon Gaspard, and she's our um, West Coast plus Texas recruiter. So even though Texas is technically part of our central market, Shannon handles Texas. It's just too big of a state for me. So um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, but anyway, so just wanted to, again, say thank you and welcome. Um, today's presentation is really geared towards you. So we want you to have the opportunity to ask questions of our panelists. Um, and you know anything that you might want to know about working in our wealth practice at Mercer. Um, many of them have been where you are not too long ago, so they can talk about sort of the college transition to from college to career, um, their role, what they do, um, anything you really want to know. Uh, but before um, we jump into questions, we are going to do a kind of a brief overview. Um, Karen E is going to kick us off with a brief overview, and then each of the panelists is gonna do an introduction, just kind of give you some background on them. Um, and then we'll open up the floor to questions. So while they're speaking, you can feel free to type questions in the chat if something like comes to your mind and you don't wanna forget it, or obviously you can write it on a notebook by your, you know, by your side and um, come off mute when we open up the floor for questions and ask those questions. Uh, we'd love for you to have your cameras on as it is definitely more of an engaging experience for the presenters. Um, after we go through, you know, their intros and a little bit on the overview of the business, we will kind of come back into this view where we can all look at each other and uh, be more interactive that way. So uh, feel free again to come off your camera at that point in time if you'd like. Um, other than that, everybody should be on mute at this point. Um, just try and make sure to keep yourselves on mute during the presentation portion and unless you're asking a question. Um, any recruiting related questions, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, William, Shannon, or myself can answer those throughout the, throughout the um, presentation. And um, other than that, I think that's all the housekeeping. This is recorded. We will post it on our um, YouTube channel and send out uh, the links if you wanna watch it again or share it with any of your friends. Uh, application deadlines are this Sunday, but I'll talk about that at the end as well. So anyway, I'm going to kick it over to Karen. Thank you again. Hi, all. I'm Karen Yee. Um, I'm an associate in Mercer's Wealth Business sitting out of the New York office. I've been with Mercer for about four years now. I started out as a actuarial intern in the retirement business the summer of my junior year in college, and I graduated, came back full time working in both the retirement and investment consulting business. Um, you know, outside of work, I love to travel and I love to eat. Um, you know, recently I purchased my first uh, condo building. So hopefully um, there's more to come with that. Um, and then just to quickly give you guys a overview of what Mercer Wealth is. As you can see here, um, there's four kind of main groups that Mercer does. And what my colleagues and I work on is wealth. And in 2017, Mercer merged its investments and retirement business to become wealth. Um, the merge of the two businesses made a lot of sense as we were both working on large corporate pension plans with investments providing advice on the asset side and retirement providing advice on the liability side. And then seeing here kind of a quick overview of Mercer Investment Consulting, um, there are essentially three sides to this business. Um, there's a research side, where we have a designated team of individuals who meet with portfolio and asset managers to evaluate their funds performance, team, strategy, and style. And they give these funds a Mercer rating, which designates our confidence in the strategy. Looking to the right, there's solutions, which is Mercer's OCIO business, with stands for outsourced chief investment officer, where we are the world's largest by assets under management. 
Um, clients essentially delegate their assets to us and we manage it for them. Um, for example, if a fund's performance has done poorly, we have the full discretion to terminate and replace the fund for them. And then kind of looking towards the middle is what my colleagues and I basically, is what we work on, um, on advice is the side of business that provides solutions to corporate pension plans, 401ks, or foundations and endowments. This includes advice on strategy, structure, implementation, and ongoing fiduciary management. Um, at its core, we monitor our clients' funds, provide recommendations, and inform clients of any updates that may impact their plan or policies. And then switching over to Mercer Retirement Consulting, um, where we work on the liability side of the business. Um, this side of the business provides actuarial advice on defined benefit, defined contribution, and retiree medical plans. At its core, we are given data of our clients' participants, and we analyze it, package it up, and put it into our valuation systems to generate a liability number. The liability numbers are then used to perform our annual valuations for funding and accounting, budget estimates, and compliance requirements, which include government forms for MPBGC premiums. Outside of the core work, um, we also provide solutions to clients, which include retirement plan design, plan termination, benchmarking retirement plan adequacy, as well as pension risk transfer to insurance companies. Outside of the actuarial space, um, we also do work on an administration of client plans where we calculate employees' pension benefits, send election forms, and start their benefit payments. So this is a quick five minutes overview of kind of what Mercer um, Wealth does. I will turn this over to my colleagues to, to introduce themselves, um, starting off with Cole. Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Cole. I've been here at Mercer for about a year now. Um, I'm based out of our Chicago office. I'm an investment consulting analyst, originally from central Illinois, went to Illinois State. Um, a few things about me. I love to do anything outside, travel anywhere. Um, big sports fan, going to a Chicago Bulls preseason game tonight, so looking forward to that. Um, and then my career advice. I think the big one to focus on is, is volunteering for opportunities. Um, that's what's really, I think, kind of progressed my career here at Mercer so far and, and you know, not being afraid to ask questions. And um, yeah, I guess I don't know who's next. I think Zach is up next. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Zach. I am a uh, wealth uh, actuarial analyst in the Denver office. I work mostly with retirement plans, so more on the defined benefit side. Um, I've been at Mercer for uh, about a year and a half now. I went to UCLA. I'm originally from uh, the Seattle area. Um, I, uh, I'm a bit of a homebody when it comes to, to hobbies. Um, I like nerd culture. I like movies and video games and stuff like that. But um, I also like uh, going on road trips and um, sports and stuff like that, too. Um, my advice would be that uh, work-life balance is important. Um, I feel like especially with uh, the pandemic going on and everybody working virtually, it's a lot easier to burn out. You don't have that same you know, sort of interpersonal uh, rejuvenation that you get from being around, uh, you know, having that camaraderie in the office. So um, it's important to, uh, when it's work time, you're working. And uh, when you're not working, um, it's important to, you know, fill in that time with those things that you're most passionate about uh, so that you can be recharged and, you know, make the most out of uh, that time that you have to work and, you know, be as efficient as possible. It's, it's hard when you don't really have that, you know, work home separation. Um, yeah, I think that's a that's a really important detail. So so try to um, segregate those two parts of your lives um, as much as you can, and uh, and you'll be a lot happier in the long run. I think. Hi everyone, my name is Marina. Um, I'm also an investment analyst, and I've been at Mercer for about six months. I started out as an intern, so that was three of my six months. So we're just um, almost at four months now, I guess, full time. I went to school at Loyola and I sit in the Chicago office as well, but I'm originally from Birmingham, which is just right outside of Detroit. Uh, for hobbies, I like running, hiking, and tennis. And then I also recently adopted a kitten, which is my picture on the right. Her name is Remy. She's so sweet. I'm obsessed with her. So that's been a big hobby of mine. And then for career advice, uh, kind of similar to Cole, like volunteering for new opportunities, but I think asking questions is a big part of that too. So I think the more you ask, the faster you learn and the better you get to know your colleagues.
So hello everyone, my name is Sandy Asumu and I originally come from Ivory Coast, which is a beautiful country located in West Africa. I moved to the US in 2016 and then went to college, graduated from George Mason University in December 2020 and then started Mercer in January. So I'm very new. Um, I've been a Mercer for less than a year, so I know exactly how you guys feel. Um, I'm working in the defined benefit side, so I'm a retirement consulting actual analyst. And as OBs, I like to travel, I like to visit new places, countries, and everything. So um, as a career advice, I would say network as much as you can. So I remember when I was in college, I just learned about Mercer through a networking opportunity. So network as much as you can. And when you start working, just ask as many questions as you can. Um, um, and as Marina said, that's going to be a good way for you to learn and grow. So yeah. All right, so that's for our panelists today. I think, Michaela, do you have any other remarks? No, I was just going to say, yeah, thank you, everybody, for sharing your stories. Um, what's happening to my laptop at the moment? But um, so, yeah, at this point in time, um, we are inviting you to ask any questions that you might have. So you can take your, well, I know there's a little hand raise icon, so if you want to do that, and we can kind of go in order as you have questions, or you just take yourself off mute and ask. Um, feel free to do that. If you're a little more shy, you can put your question in the chat and we'll throw it out there to people. Um, I mean, I'll kick it off and just ask you guys, um, why did you choose Mercer? So I guess I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, so it's been a while. I've been here for about four years now. Um, but when I first started kind of, you know, looking for my career path, um, I went to school for actual science and I knew for a fact that I wanted to do consulting. I just like the aspect of kind of, you know, talking to people more, helping clients. Um, it's definitely a job that doesn't get boring. I have, I do something new every day. Um, and that was definitely something that I wanted to do. So kind of looking into Mercer, um, having such a big global presence, that was definitely a company I wanted to kind of join and I don't regret it. Um, you know, anything that you could possibly think of, Mercer has that kind of career path for you that you can kind of switch to, um, which is definitely why I chose Mercer. Um, wanna, should I pass it off to Cole? Yeah, sure. Um, I chose Mercer for a couple of different reasons. I mean you know, the amount of people you meet both within the firm and outside of the firm, um, it, it's it's kind of nuts. I mean, we're working with asset managers every day. We're working with, you know, different lines of businesses across Mercer. That's that's great. I think the work-life balance that Mercer offers is fantastic. They're very, very flexible with us. And, um, you know, the hours that we work, not in terms of, I guess, the quantity, but more of so when you're working, especially in this remote environment. Um, yeah, I don't know if Zach, you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I, um, I would love to uh, piggyback off that. Um, the, I feel like a lot of the managers that we work with here, um, no matter what, you know, specific line of business you work in uh, within Mercer are really emotionally intelligent people. Um, they're really good at, um, you know, examining uh, their team's needs and, um, you know, being uh, sensitive about, um, you know, how the pandemic affects us. And, um, and how we can burn out when we're, uh, you know, just working by ourselves behind a computer at home. And, um, and they're really good about that. And, and they give us the resources that we need to be successful um, in spite of that. And, and they help us along. So I, I've really enjoyed being at Mercer specifically. I, I, they give, you know, really awesome uh, accommodations for uh, the remote work situation. And, um, and they work really well. Uh, with the, uh, you know, employees, analysts, people that are at, you know, our level here uh, to make sure that we have everything we need to, to be happy here. So, yeah. I can add to that too. I would echo everything that you guys all said about the people. I think everybody is so nice and they really do want you to learn and they care about you as a person too, which is great. Um, I know when I interviewed, I interviewed with the people who I work with now, and they're also nice, but everybody I've worked with outside of that has been great and really are encouraging of learning and answering questions and everything. So I've really enjoyed that component of it. Um, I can add to that. So whenever I, as, whenever I first finished college, I was looking for, again, a consulting 
company where I'll be able to grow my actuarial skills. And then Mercer was basically the only option on the table. But when I took it, I had an amazing experience and I'm still having an amazing experience. People are willing to help you grow. People are willing to help you um, succeed in your career and everything. So basically that's why I picked Mercer. I see there's a few hands up. Um, Brian, did you have a question for us? Uh, yeah, this one's a little bit more directed towards Marina. Uh, I noticed that you got pretty far in uh, six months, and I was wondering how you made that jump from intern to analyst so quickly. Um, so when I started my internship, I actually already had the job as an analyst, so I kind of just started early, but it was actually super helpful because I got exposure to all the software and all the concepts and stuff early, and then it helped me a lot when I got started. Did you have a question for us? Yeah, uh, so what does the day-to-day -day look like at Mercer? So if you want to go, Cole, answer that? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think every day is different. It kind of also depends on, you know, the time of year, right? Um, we do performance reporting every quarter. So about month end or after, let's see one month after quarter end, I should say, um, is when we kind of start working on performance reports. And that kind of takes up a good chunk of your time for a month and a half, two months. Um, between then, a lot of different projects, and, and this kind of changes by the quarter and by the client. So if I have 15 clients, I may be doing a fee review for one, an investment structure review for one, um, you know, an investment manager search, they want to replace something in their lineup. So it's a lot of different stuff. And, you, you know, like, I would say the day-to-day -day is is really not the same. Um, and it also, it does really depend on the time of year, at least for this. And that's for you know, like what I do and what Zach does, it, it's entirely different, right? So I don't know if Zach, you wanna step in and explain more the actuarial side of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not too dissimilar to uh, your side either, Cole. It really does depend on the time of year. We just got through um, end of September was a, you know, a really big crunch time for us on the uh, retirement actuarial side. We um, were finishing up uh, all kinds of different funding reports for a bunch of clients that are all due at the end of September. So um, it does depend on the time of year. Sometimes they're definitely busier than others. Um, and you know, I mean, as far as like workflow day to day, I mean, I personally spend probably about 15, 20 minutes first thing in the morning, just organizing my workflow, figuring out which projects, you know, need to go out today, which projects need to go out, you know, in the next two, three days or, you know, in a week. Um, and then I kind of prioritize my workflow around that. Um, but really, it, it is hard to tell because you kind of get different projects every day. And sometimes you get those projects a month in advance, and sometimes you get those projects thrown on your desk and they need to be turned around in an hour. So um, so it does help to be able to think on your feet a little bit. Um, it generally is pretty stable. Um, you know, as far as like the typical nine to five, I almost never have to work past five um, if I don't want to. Um, you know, the, there's usually that opportunity to, to take on more work, but um, as far as like the, the managers and your teams, uh, they usually do a pretty good job of uh, making sure that you don't need to go over that and that you have that healthy work-life balance. But um, the day-to-day -day work, the things that you're actually doing on the retirement side uh, vary every single day. I, I definitely don't do the same projects every single day. It's always something fresh. Jonathan, did you have a question for us? Yes. Um, I was just wondering, um, how would you say, although it seems that most of you are, are fresher faces that started um, during Corona, but how would you say that the career, that that the uh, industry has changed during uh, during COVID and um, especially with like interfacing with clients as well as working over Zoom and travel, which is I know I know is a big part of consulting. Um, how has that changed? And do you think it's going to remain that way um, for years to come? Um, let me take a first step at that. Um, so I think previously we kind of with my clients, it was kind of like you schedule a meeting and you kind of all meet face to face. But now since everything is via Zoom, it's extremely easy to kind of connect. Um, I think I'm more connected with my, with my clients than I've ever been before. Um, I mean, traveling, um, I haven't done that in the past, I think, 20 months at this point. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue because none of, none of my clients are expecting us to kind of meet in person. Um, 
but to be honest, I don't think it's changed kind of the way my day-to-day -day working kind of experiences. Um, I do think this might be more, you know, kind of keeping here in the, for the future. Um, I think it's because, especially with consulting, you know, clients kind of need you kind of, you know, within five minutes or so. And it's definitely a lot easier to kind of set up a call rather than waiting a month or two months later. So does anyone else want to kind of piggyback on that one? I mean, I think the rest of us have pretty much been here strictly during COVID times. But what I can tell you is, you know, Mercer is a client first business and every client's different, right? Um, some are maybe needier than others. And how they, how they choose to conduct business going forward, I think is just going to be different by the client. Like some have been going into the office for months and, you know, they'll ask consultants, well, why can't you come in for a meeting? And so, you know, I think now we're allowed to do that, but, you know, prior to a couple months ago, maybe that wasn't the case. So it, it's kind of different. And I think you just have to manage it on a client by client basis. So there's a question in the chat um, from Kylie. Um, to those who have completed an internship during undergrad and transitioned into a full-time role, what was the biggest challenge in that transition? Um, I think Marina, you touched on that a little bit. Is there anyone else here that kind of interned here? No? Marina, do you um, want to yeah, I can touch on that. So I actually, I didn't do mine during my undergrad years, I did like a five-year program. So I was actually a graduate student when I did the internship. But honestly, I don't really think I had a lot of challenges. I think people were really like considerate of the fact that I was a student and really considerate of my time. And I also think it was a really cool experience to do it while I was in school to combine like my schoolwork with what I was actually doing at Mercer. So it was a really good experience. And I'll add to that, um, I interned the summer year of my junior year in college. So um, kind of the summer internship program is about 10 weeks and you essentially kind of learn everything that Mercer kind of has to offer when it comes to like proprietary tools, um, getting hands-on exposure to client work. Um, so that was definitely kind of what I did in my internship. But when it came back to me transitioning, it was definitely a lot easier than to say if I were to went to another company and came to Mercer. And not to say that that's like you can't do that, but um, I think a lot of people just are very considerate at Mercer to kind of know that you're all kind of, you know, fresh grads and you're learning and, you know, you're trying to get the hang of, you know, you know, for those who are studying for actuarial exams, um, they definitely are very considerate about it. Um, if, Asan, do you have a question for us? Yes. Um, would you be able to speak a little bit on Mercer's commitment to professional development for uh, the uh, newly graduates? I guess I can start is, I mean, in terms of what I've been doing since I graduated, um, I'm a CFA candidate right now, and I completed level one in February, have not registered for level two yet, kind of uh, pushing that back a little bit, getting uh, acclimated with some other things in life. But, um, you know, Mercer is very, very supportive. I mean, we were given study days off that we could take. I mean, I think the, first, the five days prior to the exam, I was given off. Um, a lot of other people within Mercer have taken, you know, the CFA or actuarial exams, which I can't speak on myself, but they also will pay for you to do those things and it's encouraged for you to do so. It's not like a, you know, requirement by any means, but it's definitely encouraged and, and it is supported very well. Yeah, um, for the actual, in the actuarial side, they do give us study days off. They also um, pay for your study materials and they're really committed for you to succeed in this run. Um, they also give the incentive of, you know, if you pass one exam, we'll give you um, a raise, or if you pass it for, uh, like, in, in your first try, we'll give you a bonus and things like that. So um, in terms of career development and professional development, Mercer is really good at that. Um, Kenneth, did you have a question for us? Uh, yeah, I was just curious about some of the skill sets required to be successful at Mercer. So. Um, overall, you know, across the board, even with consulting or uh, from like an analyst perspective, uh, there's a lot of hard skills that can be involved. Uh, but I was curious if when you are able to get the job or possibly an internship at Mercer, if you have uh, strong soft skills and you can develop those things, uh, is Mercer kind of understanding and can help you out with the hard skills uh, and learning some of the softwares and things that they use? Are, are they looking more for soft skills since those are harder to teach, essentially. Zach, do you want to answer that? 
Yeah, I can take a first stab at that. Um, I would I would actually agree that um, having the soft skills uh, coming in is probably more valuable than having the hard skills coming in because, like you said, um, you know, people will show you how to use our software, use our tools, um, all the you know shortcuts and details that uh, you're going to have to learn in Excel to be successful at your projects. But it's not easy to teach you how to you know present, you know, a PowerPoint deck uh, to a client, you know, and be able to, you know, be confident when you're speaking, uh, you know, trying to make eye contact with the camera and stuff like that. You know, those are all really important skills that, you know, like you said, they're not really teachable. So um, we have tons and tons of resources to help you get up to speed on the technical track, but um, any way that you can develop your soft skills, or if you already have them, that's um, definitely a big, um, you know, plus for you when, you um, when I was first applying for the job with Mercer, I didn't have any internship experience, um, you know, not with an actuarial firm with Mercer, or any, any kind of internship experience, but I did have three years experience uh, selling cars. So those soft skills and those interpersonal skills that um, I developed there were um, really valuable in the interview process. And, and I like to think that, um, you know, that experience and what I took away from that really helped me get to uh, where I am today. There's a question in the chat box from Jordy. Um, what opportunities and internships did you take to get to the place you are today? Has anyone of the panelists yeah. had an uh, I can, I guess I'll take the first shot at that one. Um, I mean, I had an internship with a uh, private investment firm in my hometown. Um, and I mean, I ended up choosing Mercer over, over a full-time job there, but um, you know, I think, internships are great and, and, you know, getting involved at school and in school is, is fantastic as well. I mean, I did plenty of stuff within, I mean, I was in Greek life in college and, um, you know, volunteer work and all that stuff, but, but I think Zach really hit the nail on the head. It's, it's all about the soft skills and, you know, experience is great. Everybody in here is going to probably have fantastic experience by the time you graduate or, or get an interview with Mercer, but I really think it's, it's all about the soft skills and, and honestly, who you know that that really can help you out. And do you have a question for us? It, sorry, did you say my name? Yeah. Oh, um, I was just wondering if um, a couple of you guys could talk about like what the training process was like, how long it was and um, how that was like going through a training process at Mercer. I can take that one. Um, I think for training, it's kind of like a slow, I guess like a slower process because I feel like you don't really learn until you start actually working on stuff. So as you get going, I feel like people are super helpful and they give you the tools you need to succeed, but you kind of have to start tackling like client assignments to really get the hang of things. Um, in regards to like formal trainings, I know I had like a couple tutorial zooms and things like that, but I think working with my client teams is how I really caught up to speed and I'm still catching up to speed. So I would say that the training isn't like necessarily the biggest part of it. It's just like joining the team and then you kind of take off from there. Let's kind of piggyback on that. Um, Mercer has created, Mercer Wealth has created kind of more of a formal training process. So all of the internships and kind of the first year um, analysts kind of all, you know, attend virtual Zoom like training sessions on all the proprietary tools that Mercer offers. Thank you. Jay, did you have a question for us? Yes, first I wanted to say thank you to everyone here today and for sure, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. And I wanted to ask what advice do you have for us as we go through the recruiting process to stand out as a candidate? Um, I guess I'll, yeah, I guess I'll go first. Um, well, thank you for the, the thank you to start. Um, your question was how to stand out. Was that, did I, did I hear that right? Yes. How to stand out in the recruiting process. Yeah. I think one, one thing, you know, general piece of advice is, is not to get kind of too worked up about the whole thing. I know it, it can be a really nerve wracking process, but, you know, be confident in your resume and be confident in the things that you've done. Um, and, and again, I think really it's the soft skills that are going to come out, right. You know, if you're interviewing against five other people for, you know, an investment consulting analyst role, you guys all probably landed in an interview for the same reasons, right? Like your resume is great and everything, but 
it really is those soft skills that are going to make you stand out. And it's how you conduct yourself in an interview and, and you know, things like body language and um, confidence. And, and, and it, it's not going to be the technical stuff. It really is going to be just kind of how you handle yourself. Um, Emma and Preet, I think I'm saying that wrong. Did you have a question for us? Um, yeah, I was wondering if you guys had to get any certifications before starting or what you had to do after starting. So um, for me, speaking to my, for myself, um, I didn't have any type of certification. And I mean, I'm in, in the actuarial side. So basically we're required to pass actuarial exams and, you know, being an associate and a fellow and things like that. But when I started Mercer, I was um, committed to pass actual exams. And I talked about it in my interview. I talked about it. Um, um, I put it on my resume as well. So I don't think you necessarily need many, many qualifications. If you're in the actuarial side, you, you need to show that you're willing to pass these actual exams. And again, you need to, to show the, the soft skills that they talked about. Uh, Wahid, did you have a question for us? Thank you for, for this opportunity of presenting yourself today. I appreciate it. Um, I did enjoy hearing about the team environment and the culture of the company and the ability to, to serve and help people and make a difference. I was just wondering, what are the opportunities to grow in the company um, and how does that usually work? So when you kind of first start off as an analyst, you kind of are doing more of, I guess, the data kind of heavy lifting. Um, and then as time progresses and, you know, as you get promotions and you've been here for a long time and you gain a lot more experience, you become more client facing. And then um, from kind of supporting your lead consultants, you eventually become a lead consultant. So that's kind of how the growing process is. Um, does anyone else kind of have anything to add to that? I, mean, I can speak to the, I guess, the team aspect of it. Um, you know, when you have, I don't know, I'm going to go back to my kind of standard number here of 15 clients. There's 15 different client teams and different consultants and things like that. So, you know, whether you're in the office or working remote, you kind of learn how to work with different people in different ways. Um, but you still do have like your, your core team, right? Like I have, my team is based out of primarily Chicago and St. Louis. The people in Chicago, you know, we, we do stuff like we've gone to, you know, like a Cubs game, we've, we do happy hours, and if we have one tomorrow night, like, there, there's a lot of different, you know, and I think those things help, the, you know, help add to your team chemistry, but working with so many different people in so many different parts of the U.S. and abroad, you definitely, you know, kind of learn quickly how different people operate, and, um, and you kind of learn how you operate as well, so... Um, there's a question in the chat from Christopher. Um, what fields of study did the panelists major in during university? Um, I undergrad, my undergrad, I majored in actuarial science. Uh, Cole, what did you major in? I was general finance. Financial, actuarial, mathematics. I was finance and accounting. And I was mathematics with a concentration in actuarial mathematics. Then we have a question from Jesse in the chat. How does a wealth investment consulting analyst differ from a finance analyst? Michaela? I think that's, I think I think that's, that's my finance. title, so I can try to field oh. that, I guess. Um, I mean, finance analyst is, is pretty broad, right? I mean, you could you could work at really any Fortune 500 company and be a financial analyst, and, and that could mean a lot of different things. But really what we do, what, what I do in my role specifically is work on defined contribution and defined benefit plans um, for Fortune 500 companies. So basically offering advice to investment committees, you know, or if, if they're a delegated client, I guess, making their investment decisions. But um, I guess on a very, very high level scale, it, it's kind of just offering advice on investments in a retirement plan. Ryan, did you have a question for us? 
Yeah, I just have another quick question. Um, how is the interview process structured? Like, is it like a video interview where you're getting recorded and pre-recording the answers, or is it a person-to-person interview? So I think there's a few kind of parts to it. So the first part would be the higher view, which is um, you kind of record a video of the predetermined answers or questions, and then um, there will be um, like kind of a few we kind of Zoom interviews. I think you do about three Zoom interviews. And then once kind of you pass through that stage, you get towards um, like a, you meet with the people that you'll actually work with and the office that you choose um, and the position you kind of, you know, are interviewing towards. Shvam, do you have a question for us? Hi, yeah, I had a broad question about um, what, what skills like did you learn at Mercer that you were surprised to learn? I know that when you apply to these positions, you kind of read the prerequisites and you knew what you were getting into, but was there anything that you were like surprised to learn? Um, I, I definitely didn't think my Excel skills would be as, uh, as, as far grown as they have gone, <laughs> um, but that's definitely uh, one of the skills that I've definitely learned at Mercer, um, you know, hard technical skills. Um, also kind of just all the proprietary tools that Mercer has, it's never ending. I never knew Mercer had so many. <laughs> it's kind of like I thought I knew how to do something and then it turns out there's a lot more things I can do with it. So anyone else wants to add to that? I, know I feel like I live in my outlook. So, I mean, that's okay. probably something to get comfortable with, but that's all I've got, Maria, if you want to take it. I was going to say, like, aside from technical skills, I know I'm in the non for profit sector and I studied finance and accounting, but that wasn't something I necessarily learned about in school. So I think like getting started on it and learning about all the different plan types and things like that was really cool. And it's a big part of my job now. So that was really nice. Kenneth, did you have a question for us? Uh, yeah, I was actually curious, uh, going back to like schooling. Uh, so I'm pursuing like a master's degree in finance as of next year. And with that, there's a lot of different concentrations to choose from. Uh, we have like data analysis, like quantitative finance, um, even like risk management, which is more like big business to big business. So I was just kind of curious if you're looking at it from your perspective across the board for the finance industry, what would you guys say would be a beneficial concentration or something to kind of hone in on? Because um, it's just a really broad spec uh, sector, and I just really don't know where to go exactly. I would say go with what you enjoy the most, if I'm being completely honest. I think they all sound like some pretty solid options, but I think at the end of the day, you'll you'll do the best in what you enjoy the most. And, you know, if, if I'm looking at resumes, I'm, I won't really, I guess, know the difference. I guess I, I could see some nuance between them, but, you know, I'm more impressed that, you know, you got through the program with good grades while, you know, doing other things outside of the program. And, and I think, you know, if you're able to, to talk about your, the experiences you had while you were in the program, you'll be able to talk a lot more about something that you enjoy doing and, and you'll excel a lot better in something that you, that you enjoy. So I don't know if one sticks out to you personally, but that's probably the route that I would go. I would say, uh, take whatever, you know, courses um, give you the most preparation for whatever exams you're going to have to take later on once you start your career. So whether you're um, looking at, you know, going like the CFA route more in the, uh, the finance investment area, or if uh, you want to be, you know, more in the actuarial sector and you're going to be taking uh, SOA exams, um, a lot of universities usually have programs that are either very closely related to or like are directly applicable to helping you pass those exams. So I know for me, I was able to take classes when I was an undergrad uh, to pass my first four actuarial exams. And, and that was a huge leg up um, instead of just trying to cram by myself with a study guide, you know, no professor to ask questions to. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's a really useful resource that a lot of uh, universities are incorporating nowadays for, you know, all, all the tracks that Mercer kind of offers is, uh, you know, to be able to be on that track where you're learning how to pass these exams and the material that are in them ahead of time. Anyone else have any other questions for us? Feel free to unmute yourself.
Um, I wanted to ask about the SOA exam. Um, what type of questions could I expect on the SOA exam? Zach, um, sorry, go ahead, Karen. No, no, go ahead. I was like, did you want to cover it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that is a really broad question. There are, um, I mean, it depends on which S S SOA exam you're looking at. Um, I mean, there's tons of them. Uh, I think you have to take seven uh, to even get your, your ASA, which is your associatehood, kind of your first level um, as far as like a professional certification on the actuary track. Um, the nice thing, though, is the SOA does publish um, past exam questions on their website. So you can get examples of like the types of questions that they're going to ask um, on their website. And they are very similar in format and structure to uh, what you'll be taking on the actual exam, too. So, um, I mean, that's how I passed my first couple of exams. I just took the classes at college and then I just went through a bunch of practice questions, past exam questions on the SOA website. And, um, and I was able to pass my first couple of exams that way without having to pay for a study guide. So, so those questions um, that the SOA has on the website is, is a really good starting point, in my opinion. Okay, so it's like general knowledge. It's just a, an exam that I have to take before I graduate, and I never really heard about it. And so um, that's what I was asking. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's like a, there's the probability exam, which is typically the first one that people take. Um, the second exam uh, is financial mathematics, and then um, so on and so forth. But th those are typically the only two that people typically take uh, during undergrad. Sometimes they take the uh, investments and financial markets exam, which is the third one. But I know that the SOA is changing that track. Um, I think the end of this year, they're, they're kind of overhauling the exam track again. But those first two exams are going to be the same, and those are the um, two exams that uh, we typically see the most candidates coming in with, or at least having attempted. So that would be probability and financial mathematics. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Jesse, do you have a question for us? Uh, yeah, I do. So um, for the consulting analyst position, uh, when you first start, is it more autonomous where they just kind of throw you and expect you to know what you're doing? Or is it the kind of thing where you'll shadow someone for months and months? So it's a little bit of both. Um, you're never thrown in the fire for anything. Um, no one expects you to kind of learn to figure out anything out, everything out about yourself. Um, someone's going to always be there to kind of guide you. Um, but you're also working on the client work by yourself as well. Um, but kind of how the client accounts kind of get structured is there's always an analyst, an associate, a senior associate, and like a lead consultant on it. So there's kind of big team structure. So, you know, if you ever had questions, just kind of move on to the next person that's kind of a little bit senior above you. And then you kind of work together to kind of deliver client deliverables. I think someone, I think I cut someone off. I don't remember who I cut off. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to answer that. The, I wanted to say that usually people will give you instructions on how you should be doing things. And if you don't understand something, just ask a question and they'll be happy to actually go through it via Zoom. So as Karen say, they never throw you under the fire like that. They will actually be with you and walk you through it. So, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat box. Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions, um, I will just share that we do have positions posted currently both, well, within Wealth, we have full-time uh, Wealth Retirement Actuarial Analyst positions and investment analyst positions. Um, if, you are, if you are currently a junior or a sophomore, you can be on the lookout in the next month or so for some opportunities for you. They're not necessarily full-time internships, but they are abbreviated versions that can 
kind of lead to the same result of a job offer potentially. Um, so we're doing externships for or and, and or like a leadership summit later on in the winter if you're an underclassman. Um, so keep a, a lookout on Handshake for those opportunities if you are not a graduating senior this year and you are interested in wealth. Our positions are posted in Handshake, so you can find them. The deadline is on this Sunday, October 10th, so you want to apply by then if you, um, if you are interested. And other than that, next week we do have a senior leader panel, so it's a cross line of business, so you'll hear from four different senior leaders about kind of their career experience um, and their career story. And they'll talk a little bit more kind of about the future of the business and those types of questions, innovation, career paths, things like that, that you might wanna know from more senior people um, within the organization. So that is next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, um, also uh, available for you to register within Handshake as well. So, um, Let's see, I'm looking at the chat right now. Um, so I think I, there's a question that says, are internships available to be virtual? So yeah, the program that we will be offering, which is not an internship, but an externship, it'll be three weeks long, still paid, but um, only three weeks is going to be virtual with the, um, option to come into a local office, not necessarily the office that you'll be working in only because if you're at school and you're staying at school over the summer, but that might not be where you wanna be for full time. We just wanna make it easy for you to come meet some colleagues in the office so you can go to the closest office. Um, those details are kind of being worked out, but that's, but that's what uh, it is virtual. So you will not be required to be in person. Um, yeah. Same as the winter, the winter thing is a, is sort of a leadership, it's um, event. So it will, it will be advertised when we're ready to go on Handshake. Um, and it is also virtual. Josh, Lester, what, what do you mean different date? Oh, what's the date in Handshake for the, is it for the um, decision deadline or the application deadline? what's the date that you're seeing our it on our website it oh no um it's not december 31st the job application will close on our website on um the 10th of october but thank you we'll take a look at that um anything else from anybody any other questions or thoughts if yeah, I actually had one. Yeah, go okay, ahead. So I'm sorry. On, no worries. Uh, so on the website, it says that there's positions available in Seattle, Irving, Portland, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Will we be permitted to pick which location we want, mm -hmm. or will we be told which position, which uh, location? No, uh, during our first round interview process, there's a question that we asked that asks you to select what location that you're, that is your preferred location. So okay. that's where we, we will try to place you in your preferred location. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? In the, in the internship I'm looking at, it says college program 2022. <clears throat> so how many hours per week uh, will the internship be on average requiring um, considering classes at my college? So our, all of our internships are in the summer. So they're 40 hour a week internships because we're assuming people aren't in school during the summer. It's just that there are no wealth internships posted. I think you're probably looking at health. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate you all for attending, for your attention, for your questions. Um, and I appreciate the panelists for their time. Um, and you had some great advice that you shared with everybody today. Um, we, the three recruiters, I'm not sure if we, anyone put their contact information in the chat, but um, we can all be found on Handshake. Um, I will put mine in the 
chat right now. Again, I handle the central market. So if you have any questions on any of the Midwest offices, you can reach out to me, Michaela Seward. Um, and other than that, hope to see you again soon. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you all. Yeah.